Hey everyone, this is Elliot Flourish. We're uh, getting back to you with another video from the Practical Pilot series. Uh, today we're heading up to San Francisco, heading towards the Golden Gate Bridge right now, kind of a bay tour. We're going to do some maneuvers with a little bit of a backdrop uh, looking over San Francisco. We're going to do steep turns and slow flight, uh, power on, power off stalls, you know, all the maneuvers that uh, we all have to do for our private pilot check ride. And, and really even our commercial and CFI check rides, uh, if you guys ever go that far. Right now we're going to go ahead and do turns around a point on Alcatraz, why not? So we'll go down to a thousand feet. The practical test standards says that we're supposed to do turns around a point at uh, anywhere between 600 feet and a thousand feet AGL. So I always want to enter on downwind. Uh, normally you're going to make left turns first. We want to be very vigilant of where the um, where other aircraft are when we're entering into this maneuver. So really looking out other aircraft, birds, and uh, thinking about where we would land in the case of an engine failure. So always things that you want to brief your examiner for really any maneuver that you're getting into. And this maneuver may end up as far as 30 or more degrees of bank, but I would target trying to be at a radius from your fix that allows you to um, manage the entire turn somewhere in the vicinity of 30 degrees plus or minus 10 all the time. And the idea is uh, just keeping that same radius all the way around the maneuvering point. So it's a division of attention between your point, looking out for traffic, and holding your altitude and keeping uh, things coordinated. That's the key to this maneuver. And the examiner is really looking for that division of attention more than he is uh, looking for your exact radius from the point. It's, it's all about seeing that you're able to uh, manage this maneuver without losing control of the aircraft and without losing separation from other aircraft around you. Okay, so that was that maneuver. We'll start with steep turns next. So we'll go up to 2,500 feet. Altitude. We're under a layer of Class Bravo that uh, starts at 3,000 feet, and so we're just going to operate below that. Generally, I like to slow down to the same kind of power setting that we, you would use for pattern entry, kind of slowing down into flap operating range. And so in this airplane, it's going to be about 42% power. And then when you go into the maneuver, you want to bump in another 10% at that point. So we'll start off there, 42 or so. Slow it down, get it down below that maneuvering speed. And then uh, we'll pick a heading. We'll pick uh, an emergency landing spot and an altitude. Clearing turns, clearing the area right now, making sure there's no other aircraft around. So uh, calling out the position to the examiner in the form of uh, heading altitude and emergency landing spot, uh, completing some clearing turns at least 90 and 90 or 180 degree turn, clearing the area. And then we go through a little bit of a flow check, making sure you're on the fullest tank and uh, mixtures rich and uh, coming up through kind of a seven up flow check, uh, checking your flaps, coming up across your lights, making sure that you're lit up like a Christmas tree because that's appropriate this time of the year. And then uh, we're doing our mag check and running through, uh, just making sure everybody's buckled up tightly and uh, prepared for the maneuver. Okay, so here we are. We're pretty set up, and I'll just try to pick a heading that uh, takes us a little bit towards, uh, looks like Treasure Island. So you pick a prominent reference point ahead, ideally. Set the heading bug to it to remind you. Got the altitude bugged as well. And then we'll start uh, our turn. We'll do a right turn here, steep turn to the right. And for private pilot standards, that's going to be a 45 degree bank angle. For commercial, it's going to be uh, another five degrees, all the way up to 50 plus or minus five. Okay, so we're going into the maneuver. I bumped in a little bit of power here. If you have electronic stability protection, you're going to have to hold the autopilot button down on a Cirrus uh, on this model, though, it did not have ESP back uh, when this aircraft was manufactured, so we didn't have to turn that off uh, or override it. 
So you can see we're holding 2,500 feet here, doing a lot of uh, division of attention again, looking outside for traffic, making sure that our bank angle is good, keeping our coordination, and uh, kind of looking ahead for that heading that we were going to roll out on, looking for that prominent reference point, and uh, holding that 45 degrees. It's rather bumpy. It makes it a little tricky to hold altitude. And we want to roll out about half of our bank angle early. So, you know, at 45 degrees bank, we want to roll out about 22 degrees early uh, so that we don't overshoot. Okay, so that was that, and you can imagine that the uh, inverse of that on the left side uh, would uh, would finish up that maneuver with regards to the check ride. But we'll skip the left 360 and we'll move right into the next thing. So let's do uh, slow flight. Now all these maneuvers require that you're able to recover no lower than 1,500 feet uh, AGL. And so uh, ideally we'd be up at 3,000 feet, but we've got this class Bravo airspace up above us. And so what we're going to do is we'll just do the maneuver at uh, 2,500 and stay over the water where there's no terrain. And that'll uh, give us plenty of room to recover and keep us well within the standards uh, for uh, recovery. So we'll start with slow flight and then we'll move into power off stall and then uh, power on stall after that. So here we go again, clearing the area. And it all looks good out here. We'll kind of head towards the Golden Gate Bridge, I think that might look good. And uh, we'll get back there to 2,500. So the idea is to slow it down a little bit by pulling the power back. Typically on a Cirrus, about 25% power and then just uh, pitch the nose up. That does the trick for uh, holding you right there, allowing the airspeed to bleed off. So we'll put in one notch of flaps below 119 for this model and below 104 for the second notch. Getting things slowed down nicely. Okay, so we're trying to slow it down to just above the stall horn. And you can see we're at 83 knots, starting to slow down towards uh, our red line there, which is VSO. Uh, it's uh, just over 60 knots. And if we hear a little stall horn, we're going to bump in enough power and uh, lower the nose as necessary to get rid of that stall warning horn. So we don't want to just sit there with it blaring the whole time. Uh, if you want to tickle it occasionally, just to show the examiner that you're uh, you're managing a nice, nice uh, slow speed, that's fine. But uh, don't spend the entire time just uh, hanging on the edge of a stall. So it looks like my power setting is a little too high. Actually, the default for this uh, to hold slow flight is about 38. So if you just go straight to that power setting, you won't have the issue that I had where I just ballooned up a little bit. I set the power a little bit too high. So we'll uh, let it back down again, 2,500. We'll pull the power back a little bit more, let it slow down a bit. Now we're getting a little bit of updraft activity from the wind hitting the hills near the Golden Gate Bridge uh, on the San Francisco side. And that's given us a little bit of lift. So we'll go ahead and pitch up now a little bit more Get the airspeed a little slower. And once it gets down to the appropriate speed, we'll bump the power up towards uh, 38, 37, somewhere in there. See how that goes. Throughout this maneuver, we're trying to keep it within 10 degrees on our heading. and within 100 feet on our altitude for private pilot standards. Ideally, you get the airplane trimmed up to the point where you don't have to spend too much time uh, or too much of your energy fighting to hold your altitude and fighting to hold your heading. So you want to get it to the point trimmed up where you can almost let go of the controls and it uh, flies itself. So we'll see if we can get a little tickle of the stall warning horn here. I'm just going to turn a little bit to the right because I've got some airspace here. And typically on a check ride, the examiner will ask you to make some turns. Might be a climbing turn, might be a descending turn. So if you're going to climb, you'd want to add about 25% power. Uh, all right, so there's that tickle of the stall warning horn what we wanted to show. 
So what you can see is during a turn, typically you have to add a little bit more power. So if 38 was necessary during level flight, you probably have to bump in 5 or 10% power in order to make the turn because you're sacrificing vertical lift for horizontal component of lift, and that's what helps you make that turn. Okay, so uh, if the examiner asks you to do kind of a uh, climbing right-hand turn, we'll say to 030 and... Uh, 2,700 feet, it's not a bad idea to bug it. Add 25% power for that, and then just kind of pitch for that airspeed that's uh, just above stall speed. And just, we're trying to keep slow flight throughout the entirety of this maneuver. And for the climbing right-hand turn, it requires quite a bit of uh, right rudder. So I overshot the altitude a little bit here, 2,800, so I'll bring the power back a little bit to allow us to get back down there to 2,700. Nose again. There we go. All right, we're back to 2,700. So now we want to power back up to that default power setting of 38% uh, or so. Okay, we've got our heading, we've got our altitude, and we're stabilized again. So now the examiner says, descending left-hand turn, you power back maybe uh, 20 or so percent lower than your benchmark of 38, so we'll bring it back to like 18. Power comes back and we'll say that the examiner called for 2,500 and a left turn to uh, 300. All right, so a little bit before you get to your altitude, it's a good idea to start powering up a little bit so that you don't overshoot that. And rolling out early. Ideally, not banking much more than standard rate. Standard rate's pretty slow when you're um, when you're in slow flight. Standard rate turns going to be about oh somewhere just less than 15 degrees of bank. Maybe even as low as 10. If you're doing an Cessna or something, it might be uh, even less. Okay, so that looks good right about there. We're back stabilized. Now we'll go ahead and demonstrate a power off stall. We're looking at the Marin headlands here. So power off stall, again, you go through a little flow check, make sure everything's ready. We're all configured with the flaps full, so we're simulating that we're coming in for a landing, and we allow ourselves to inadvertently get a little bit too slow. Now we bring the nose up on final, reacting to a bird or something that we see. Who knows what the scenario is? We hear the horn. We call out that we hear the stall horn. We feel a little buffet. If the examiner wants to see a full stall, you just keep pulling back until you feel that nose drop. Add in full power. Make sure you sweep that mixture rich if it wasn't already. And we're gonna go clean one notch up. And we're gonna go to five degrees nose up. And we're gonna clean the rest of the flaps. 10 up and clean all the rest of the flaps up there. Climbing all the way back up to the altitude that we started at. So we started at 3,000 or 2,500. We're going to go back up there to 2,500 and then level off here. All right, so we bring it back to our maneuvering power setting. And that's going to be 42% on this airplane. So that completed the power off stall. Okay, now we'll go ahead and clear the area again. We'll get ready for power on stall. So in order to avoid doing that, we're going to really slow it down before we get into the stall so that we don't gain too much altitude during the power on stall. We'll also go with the minimum. Practical test standards say that you're allowed to do a 65% power on stall. So we'll do that today. <coughs> We've turned around to uh, to the northeast, and we're letting it slow down here. We've cleared the area. Uh, again, 180 degree clearing turns are the minimum. And you could be either half flaps or no flaps. We're going to go with half flaps this time. Going through a little flow check just to make sure everything's set up right. And we'll go ahead and add the power. Now we're leaving 2,500 with 65% power or so. Got a little bit of a mountain wave there that uh, raised one wing. We can hear the stall warning horn. We're going to keep bringing the nose higher. We're trying to go about one degree nose up per second. Just gradually bringing that nose up. What we want to call out is we hear that stall warning horn. 
And we want to call out the buffet that we're now feeling. And we can go all the way to a full stall. You can feel that shutter there. So we give it the rest of the power. We keep that nose attitude at something between zero and a couple degrees nose up. And then we start bringing it back into that climb attitude. We clean up the rest of the flaps, and then we're not going to bust the Bravo. There it is, 2,900. We're going to go back down to our beginning altitude of 2,500. All right, so now we've done steep turns, slow flight, power on, power off stalls. Uh, those are those are the biggies for the private pilot check ride. Uh, so uh, thank you for tuning in. I think you guys are really going to enjoy the scenery and the content of this video.